Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Quick, rough and ready PSA. I think it's probably the best way to describe this. Agents of Mayhem just released, and it had something of a red flag going into it, as in it had a launch day, launch minute review embargo. That's usually a red flag and can sometimes indicate, not always, but sometimes indicate that there is something wrong with the game and they're attempting to hide it for as long as possible until the release to maximize pre-orders, which, of course, seems to have worked as it tends to with Agents of Mayhem. Unfortunately, it may very well have come back to bite a lot of people in the arse because, according to other reviews and with my experience as well, Agents of Mayhem is currently experiencing some fairly severe performance problems and bugs on some configurations. Those configurations include mine. Now, there are some things that are not related to configurations at all, like this pop-in, which is extremely visible, as you can clearly see. And this isn't even in the open world part of the game. So, Agents of Mayhem is an open world game, but it has a hub area, which is called the Ark, which is where we are right now. And it's not much of a, it's not really a Saints Row game, but it is tied into the Saints Row license to some extent. There are some characters from it, but it's more of a superhero agency game. And the arc is where you deploy to the open world on various missions with your various characters. And you can actually have three at uh, once, so you could switch between them dynamically through some weird teleport thing in the middle of a mission. So far, sounds so pretty interesting, right? Yeah. And not a bad looker, really, honestly. It's got a nice comic book-esque aesthetic, which is backed up by some really interesting comic book scenes that they've done. Really nicely done animated cutscenes. But I streamed this for about an hour and a half yesterday, and we ran into some problems, some pretty major ones. We had a bug in which the game tanked its frame rate after we went into this menu right here. Currently, it's okay, but we had it happen three times during a hour and a half play session, and it didn't seem to be consistent. It was difficult to reproduce, but it did happen three separate times. My only theory is that it may have something to do with if you access that menu too soon after loading a bunch of data of a new area you've gone to, then it causes that to happen. It basically made the game unplayable due to a massive frame rate hitching, and you had to reload the game in order to fix it. Now, that's currently not happening, and the frame rate here is fine for the moment, but here's one of the major issues the game currently has, and the problem is it's not so easily fixed by just turning it off. Let me show you what I'm looking at here. So, if we go to display here, we see what is an Unreal 4 Engine game, and it also has some special NVIDIA effects in it. And I think any of you that have had any experience with things like Hairworks, which, if I call correctly, is AMD, and various NVIDIA effects, you may know that some of them can be real performance killers, and they definitely shouldn't be on by default, which is why I was very shocked to see that that's exactly what happened here. Now, Sun Shadow is the main offender, and... I don't know if I can reproduce this in the arc, but I can definitely do it in the main open world area. So let's do that. But it's not just these options, because going into the menu itself can cause the frame rate to tank to untenable levels. So we're going to go to a mission here, and we're going to go to Operation Raging Hour. This is going to take us down to the open world, which is a big open world, a fairly demanding one, certainly. And we're going to be looking at some of these problems. We'll see if we can reproduce this issue. Now, as always, I, I'm very, very worried about putting out videos like this because everybody's PC operates differently. Your mileage may vary. And even if like 10% of people have problems, that still means 90% don't necessarily. And I don't have a typical configuration, but I'll say this. My stats are in my about section. I'm running a Titan X Pascal right now. No overclock or anything like that. I'm running on a 6900K processor. Mild overclock on that, nothing too crazy. And I have the latest version of the NVIDIA drivers, which are specifically optimized for this game. So it said. I'm running only one card. I do not run SLI during testing because I know that SLI has a lot of problems. So I always turn my second card off. All right. So we are in the open world area right now. And the frame rate is hovering just above 60, which for 1080p on a card of this quality is actually a bit low, but it's definitely playable. But that is a little bit of a concern initially. But right now, anyway... It's pretty smooth. If we steal ourselves a car and drive around, it will hopefully maintain its frame rate. But as you can see, the pop-in is really bad. You can see cars popping in 
about 10 meters ahead of you. You can see plenty of detail pop in in the levels. And this is an issue that Saints Row has had before, but this is far more severe. And I mean, we're even getting to the situation where if you drive a fast car, you're probably going to have a car appear in front of you before you then crash into it. For an open world game, you never want that kind of pop in. And honestly, the art style of this game, which I like, by the way, I really do like, would be would indicate that they could probably save a lot in terms of performance in different areas without doing things like have severe pop-in. A pop-in's not something that is going to be system dependent. That's going to happen everywhere. And I haven't found an option to really increase that view distance yet. Okay, so far, so okay. We're able to maintain around 60 frames per second while recording at 1080p. Again, that is frankly too low for a system of this caliber, but it's playable. Okay, so here's where things start to get a little bit gnarly. So if we head to display... And this is the basic menu here. Advanced is where you want to be. Advanced is where things start to get a bit weird. So if we head on in there, you'll notice the VRAM usage has gone up. It's quite severe VRAM usage. For 1080p, that's really high. 4 gigs. I mean, this has got 12, but 4 gigabytes for only 1080p? That's very demanding. You'd expect to see that closer to 1440p and 4K. So that's in itself a concern, and that may cause some severe problems for a lot of people who maybe only have 4 gig VRAM cards. You know, that's quite common. That's a quite common amount of VRAM, and we're already exceeding that just on not too demanding settings. We have TXAA on, which is not, again, too demanding. CNTL high and astropic filtering, that barely changes anything. And we're not running HBAO, edge treatment, or screen space reflection. Now, right here is where things go horribly wrong most of the time. We head over and we select NVIDIA PCSS Plus or NVIDIA HFTS. The frame rate is just tanked to 20 by selecting this. And here's the thing. This option was on by default. I, I had to dive into advanced to turn this off. You'll notice it's barely touching the VRAM, but the game is now unplayably crap. Like it's running under 30 frames per second. And it's very inconsistent. It's all over the place. You know, it just went above 30. Now it's dropped below again. If I get in a car and drive at any speed, I imagine this is probably not going to go very well. You know, during that cutscene, it went back to 60. Now, you know, we're looking at 25, back at the 30. I mean, this is just, like, not okay at all. So you think to yourself, all right, well, obviously the easy option here is just to turn that off. Uh, that didn't fix it. Yeah. That's the problem. The options menu, and in fact, more than just that in the game, the various menus are causing permanent frame rate loss that isn't recoverable unless I believe you return to the arc. So even though I've turned that option off, the game is still broken. Yeah, this is going to happen with other options as well. It's like, can I, can I get this back? I mean, maybe even if I enable some options, that might actually help. And you might think, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you're right, but neither does what just happened either. That option is clearly off now, and yet it doesn't make a blind bit of difference. The options menu is running at 25 frames per second. This is on a monstrous system, by the way. So we're in a situation where there are various options here that through you experimenting with them or changing them or anything like that, you can actually break your own game. This is not not good at all. This is this is broken. And this is with the NVIDIA drivers that are actually designed for this game. Switching characters isn't helping. Really, the only option you have here is probably just to return to the arc. Now, as I mentioned, this is not the only thing that's caused this problem. Because you're not going to be messing with the options menu all that often. So you might think, well, this is avoidable. Well, it's not, because this is the exact same thing that happened three times during the stream yesterday when I accessed this menu, which is key. It's a squad and inventory menu. And going into this menu during the stream caused this exact same problem. The, not only that, but we actually had an even more severe problem. Something I have never seen in a game for a long time. We did a race during the stream. And, oh, right, cool, a race, that's cool. And what I'm going to do is I'll actually put a clip of the broadcast we were only broadcasting at 30 but you'll notice the problem when i show you this clip which will be on the screen right now as soon as the race ended not only did the frame rate drop to a crawl but we got actual literal slowdown as in the kind of thing that you were used to in the playstation one era game Ugh, god this thing is running like ass right now it is disturbing 
there are some pretty clear problems going on here, I think. And there are obviously some bugs. Some of them not too shabby. But bear in mind, this is a game in which you can traverse a fairly large city. As you can see, I already have some movement-based abilities. If you want to get on top of some of these highest towers, you can totally do that. And needless to say, getting on top of those, well, that's a highly demanding thing. A lot of the secrets and collectibles in this game are hidden on top of rooftops. So as I traverse, the, you know, this is getting kind of demanding. And again, we go back to that options menu and we very clearly see that the VRAM is running wild, brother. In 1080p? In 1080p? Something is up. I even just switched the presets to low, and the, I got the frame rate back to 60, but only barely. It's dropping below it. Right. That's sort of your warning right now. It's an impromptu port report, and what I'm saying to you is that if you choose to pick this game up right now, and if it works for you, great. Really happy for you. Incidentally, it just went back to 120 now. Now it's down to 60. It's all over the place. I would recommend not going over two hours so that you can actually refund it on Steam. Be very, very careful. There's obviously some fairly major issues going on. I am not the only person to report this. Trusted Reviews port reported it. Angry Centaur Gaming reported it. These are people that can be trusted. This is evidently not a isolated incident. And the slowdown problem that I just showed you I mean, I wasn't even running on Ultra for all of this, for God's sake. At 1080p on a system like this. It looks like this game is going to need some pretty severe fixing. And that's kind of a shame because what I what I managed to play of it before the whole thing went to hell was actually pretty fun and had some fairly easy, easily likable things, you know? Some things that I was kind of really enjoying with it. So let the buyer beware at the moment. I think that you should probably hold off on this until things get fixed. And if you must get it right now, do not go over your two-hour period so that if you do run into these performance problems, you can refund it. That's all I can really say. I can't guarantee what performance is going to be on thousands of different PC configurations. But I can warn you about something that's happening for me, other reviewers, and people with systems that really should not be suffering as much as they are. And I can warn you about that excessive VRAM usage, even at only high on 1080p. A lot of people are going to run into issues with that, I think. There you go. I wish I could bring you some more positive news about this at the moment. Hopefully, once this is fixed, I can come back to it and I can have a more in-depth look and tell you more about the way that the game is played. But unfortunately, it had to be a PSA day. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I mean, why would you? It was kind of miserable. But regardless, you can feel free to click the like button if it was helpful to you or the dislike button. I don't really care which. And I will see you next time.